Okay, this is going to be a quick off the cuff uh, recording. I'm doing this on my phone because, uh, like I said, it's off the cuff and I want it to be quick. And this is in response to Black Ram's uh, video about the whores and thugs in the black community. And that was the question he posed. What is our opinion or my opinion of why the black community sees itself overrun by whores and thugs? Now, I could go into a long multi-part discussion about why that is and talk about culture, talk about history and whatnot. But we're going to narrow that down and talk about what happened in the last 40 years. And in the last 40 years, there's three main reasons why you see the culture of thugs and whores overrunning the black community. And the basic three reasons are feminism, drugs, and then what we call gangster rap culture. Now, feminism as a policy, and I think I've done several videos on this, as a policy was there designed to take masculinity out of the West or out of Western culture and give females power that had a detrimental effect on black people who are naturally matrilineal people, you know, but matrilineal in a different way. Africa is matrilineal societies are designed to respect male power. The West doesn't know how to do it. They try to uh, build an egalitarian society that wasn't designed for it. There's nothing in their history, nothing in their culture that is designed to even begin to put together a matrilineal culture. That's number one. It has a devastating effect on black people. So you take naturally aggressive, I do mean naturally aggressive black women, because black women are the, have the most testosterone and then the most aggressive women in the world. And you lose them. You take the, 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 the cultural boundaries off of them and you give them power over black men. This is one result that you get. That's number one. The further breakdown of the family was drugs. You know, first we saw a flood of drugs, of heroin first, and then secondarily the PCP, and then the most devastating of all of them was crack cocaine. Crack cocaine basically killed the black community as we know it. Everybody knew that you were going to lose, if you let this demon loose in the black community, you were going to lose two generations at least two generations. Crack cocaine went through our community and made whores out of, out of our women. And, ele and with the crack cocaine money and the guns and the help to bring all that stuff in, turn low life gang members that couldn't read or write and gave them power and gave them money and gave them status. And as we know, what do women love more than anything else. They love power. They love money. They love status. And so you have even good women who weren't affected by the drugs, who didn't get strung out, get taken in by the limelight and by the sway of the power, the money and drugs and got hitched up with the lowest of the low. You gave our low life. I go to, gave our low life thug culture, thug, thugged out men status and our boys grew up to idolize these people because they had the fancy cars they had the big houses they had all the women they had all the bling boys grew up to idolize this idolize this culture the subculture because that's what that's what the women went where that's the way the women went that's what the women were going for and then out of this this sick depraved crack cocaine fuel culture which was basically funded by the CIA and, and, and transported all over the United States, run by black gangs. The music derailed a positive 
fun type of music called hip hop and added the menacing evil element to it, which was the gang, the, the, the masculinity fueled, testosterone fueled, violent hip hop culture that not only the black kids got drawn in by, but also the white children. So now you have white money given to the lowest of the low, the most seediest elements. And now these kids are rewarded with millions and millions and millions of dollars. And guess who gets drawn in by it? Our women. Now they want to watch MTV and they want to watch the box and they want to watch BET and they want to grow up to be strippers, hookers and video hoes. And we went to being people who hated to be called niggas and hated to be called bitches into using those words as badges of honor. So we lost one generation, which is Generation X. We've lost two generations, which is the millennial generation, which is Generation Y. And if we're not careful, we're going to lose Generation Z. You can see it. You can trace this all the way back to 1981 when Freeway Ricky Ross met up with Bland with 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 Blandone through his CIA contact and took a drug that that cost twenty five thousand dollars a kilo and was selling it for five. So naturally, you have this powerful drug that's been enhanced by by a, a, a chemical process that was brought out of Stanford, dumped onto the streets and basically taken out all of the baby boomers who formerly had great jobs and great houses and were hardworking people and basically obliterated them, turned them into crack things and crack addicts and then turned their kids into gangsters and thugs and hoes. And there was nobody to protect the black community. So there you have it in a nutshell. That's what happened to the black community. That's what happened to our black culture. That's what happened to our women. And after it happened to our women, that's what happened to our sons. And I don't know if it can be stopped. The boomers couldn't stop it. Generation X couldn't stop it. The millennials don't seem like they want to stop it. So we will lose not only two generations, but three or four. That remains to be seen. But that's my answer. That's my opinion. If um, anybody is curious, I could go into more detail about this. But like I said, this is off the cuff and this is something quick for Black Ram 